So I wanted to start right here by going over the last paragraph of what we read on Tuesday. These highlighted words, hostility, liberated, te technique. Uh, who can tell me what this word means, hostility? I'm gonna put a little asterisk there, hostility. Opposition. Yeah, opposition. Opposition, excellent. So what I wanna ask everybody here is, in your own words, why did the Impressionists, people like uh, Claude Monet, who painted uh, this painting, which wasn't realistic, and you could see you know, fluffy brushstrokes, why would people who painted this way face hostility? Would anybody like to? Take that question, take a minute. So my question is why would the impressionists face hostility? Take a minute and anybody who wants to answer uh, that question, just uh, raise your hand and I'll put the question in the chat. Why would the impressionists face hostility? Take a minute and then, um, Whoever wants to answer, just raise your hand in the chat. So here in this, the beginning of the paragraph, the impressionists risked everything. They struggled against poverty and hostility. Why would they face hostility? What's that all about? The people and the, the face aggressively. Mm, say, say more, Fernando. Who, who are the people? The, the face, it's the, the same in the, the people aggressively. Okay, okay, good. That's a good synonym. Marvat, um, you have your hand up. Yes, uh, uh, the people is, uh, are the viewer uh, who are wa uh, watching this uh, painting. Uh, the, they dislike this painting because uh, it's so different from traditional art and painted too quickly and using um, uh, drying colors. Mm, excellent. That's that's really good detail, specifically from the reading. Nice job, Marvat. So I liked how she said they broke away from tradition, so far from tradition. Excellent. Would anybody else like to take that question? Why would the Impressionists face hostility? Uh, Kimberly, I see your hand up. Okay, um, I think because they were like trying to do what they really want to, they just don't follow the the tradition. They just do the opposite. They start painting like what they feel, what they like. Um, they do not do it like so um, with so with many details. They just mm -hmm. paint what they like. Right, right, right. I think. Um, one thing you're, you're, you're talking about is actually quite um, what we, we could call a game changer. At the beginning of the uh, essay, you have uh, Jacques Louis David's Napoleon Crossing the Alps. So here's a, you know, a typical portrait. There's Napoleon on a horse, powerful person, you know, looking powerful, and it's painted you know, as close to real life as possible. Essentially, that's what painting was. It was this way for, you know, rich and powerful people to celebrate themselves. If anybody had enough money, they could pay a talented artist to, you know, make them look great. And all of a sudden, these impressionists, they were just expressing their own ideas and looking at the world. What Kimberly's talking about is they were expressing their own emotions and sharing it with the public, which is totally different than uh, an artist who is, you know, commissioned by a powerful person to to paint a portrait in still life. So it's what Kimberly's talking about. It's a it's a threat, very much uh, socially and politically, that artists could suddenly use their talent to express. Uh, their emotions and their ideas, and it really had not been done before. Let's take a look at 
uh, another word, vocabulary word, liberated. Um, who could tell me what this word means, liberated? Freedom. Yeah, freedom, that's a synonym, yeah. It's in our, it's in our constitution. It's in a lot of our uh, symbols. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Impressionism liberated other artists. I'm going to take that, say, I'm just going to look at a sentence fragment. Impressionism liberated other artists. What, what does that mean? Impressionism liberated other artists. Anybody want to take that question? Teacher, me. It looks sure, like Rosa. It looks like they were, um, they, they had to do what, the, um, the, like you say, power people wants to do. They couldn't mm -hmm. express their own um, opinion. And, and it was uh, led by, you say, governor, society, mm -hmm. and I think religious too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you're absolutely right. Uh, for instance, if we look at, say, a lot of uh, re Renaissance paintings, um, most of the Renaissance paintings, you know, people of figures like, say, Michelangelo, they were funded by Lorenzo Medici, who was a powerful Italian banker in Florence. And all those people who got attention, they really weren't expressing their own ideas. They were really pushing a religious and political message that was coming from uh, wealthy and powerful people in society. Um, yeah, excellent. Anybody else want to take that, uh, that question. So I'm only asking, what does this mean? The sentence fragment, impressionism liberated other artists. Anybody want to give their interpretation of that fragment of the sentence there on page 33? Um, teacher, in, I think that yeah. it was like, they were like an inspiration from okay, very other nice. artists. Yeah. Yeah, an inspiration. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Impressionism liberated other artists. Nice, good stuff. So I think that's a great, um, that's a great introduction. And I'm looking at the panel of all the students who've joined us here. we got a nice big class, fantastic. Now let's uh, take a minute and this was part of the homework. And it says at the top, guessing from context. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more there to make sure everybody can see guessing from context. Who knows what uh, guessing means? Simple word, we use it all the time. Does it mean to know or to not know? To know, to know something. To guess is to not know, to take a guess. <clears throat> guessing it's a quick answer about something yeah exactly just guessing is like a speculating well maybe that's a guess who knows the word context context is the topic the topic of a, mm -hmm. um, a paragraph or or a reading. Yeah, you got it. The topic, the subject. So this part right here, it says, read each quote from the reading. Try to guess the meaning of the word in bold from the context. Write the clues that help you guess uh, and your guess. Clues, a clue is, who knows what a clue is? Word, word key. Say it again, Marat. Word key. Kind of. It's it's like, like it's, it's like it's a, a help piece. like a helpful hint. Uh, say, say it again, please. It's like uh like an idea I think or something a piece of information. Yeah, yeah. What Kimberly said. Go ahead, Jose. It's something to approach the, to 
I don't know. Yeah, it's it's helpful bits yeah. of information. Helpful bits of information. So write the clues that help you guess your guess. So right here, there's an example. It says it, it does it for you, it models for you what they're asking you to do. So here's a quote, and you, everybody sees these right here. That's what quotations means. And it says it's from paragraph two in the reading. If one wants to characterize them with a single word that explains their efforts, one would have to create the term of impressionists. So clues, a single word that explains, guess, describe, dictionary, the dictionary definition, describe the qualities of someone or something in a particular way. So what we're trying to do is when we learn these new words, so for instance, uh, the second one here is impression. Often when you read, you're going to run into brand new words. Uh, and, and it's going to happen. So you have to use clues to guess. Or another fancy way to say guess is to infer. They are impressionists in the same sense that they render not a landscape, but the impression produced by landscape. Hmm. So if we don't know what the word impression means, what might be a clue to tell us what it means? I'm gonna ask um, three volunteers for this one and I'm gonna write their names in the margin here. I'm gonna, who wants to volunteer to give me a clue? Me? Me. Okay, uh, Kimberly? And I think I saw Fernanda's hand up there. Oh, teacher, that was um, yeah. Frances. Oh, Frances. Okay. Uh, Fran so for, uh, Kimberly, Fernanda, Frances. Okay. Kimberly, Fernanda, and Frances. Okay. So I wrote your names here. Clues, guess, dictionary. Now, Kimberly, I want you to take a minute and find clues in this sentence of what the word impression means. Fernanda, I forgot the A in your name there, sorry. Fernanda, give us your best guess based on what you see here. And Francelis, your job is to cheat. Just look it up in the dictionary. Uh, I, you can't see me speak. Smiling, I, I'm. <laughs> I, I've got a it, it, the camera's facing the page, but I've got a big smile there. So, Francelis, your job is to cheat. Just look it up in the dictionary. Okay? That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You look just like me, right? There. Okay. <laughs> so, um, take a minute, and everybody else can join in. Uh, but I want Kimberly to figure out the clues of what the word means. Fernanda, give us your best guess based on the clues. And then Francelis, you go ahead and just look it up in the dictionary and tell us what it means. So take a minute and everybody else watching, you can do this on your own. If you haven't completed the exercise, it's not a problem, you could do it right now. So I'll give everybody, uh, here is what we'll do. Uh, I'm gonna set my this timer. Uh, is one minute long enough for everybody? I think I got a teacher. It's, okay. I don't because I I did it. Homework. Okay. I'm just gonna give everybody uh, so Kimberly, Fernanda, Francelis, let me know. Do you understand what I'm asking you to do? Yes. 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 Okay, great. So here we go. I'm gonna here's the stopwatch. I'm gonna give everybody one minute here. Okay. And everybody else, if you haven't done it, you can take a look at, you can take a look, try to figure it out on your own. And once we get your answers, we can share with the rest of the class and compare.
Okay, time's up. There it is. There it is. All right. All right. Um, I think it's, I mean, the intuition of something or someone. I say it again, the what of something or someone? Intuition or feeling? Intuition or feeling. All right. Uh, Fernanda, what's your best guess? Influence. Influence. All right. Now, Francelis, you got to look in the dictionary. What's the dictionary definition? Yes. The first and immediate effect of an experience or perception upon the mind sen sensa sens sensation. Mm. sensation. Another one is a strong effect produced on the intellect, feelings, and conscience. All right. So Kimberly's clues, intuition or feeling. Um, was this in another part of the text or were, or were you guessing as well? Actually, I was guessing. <laughs> okay, so, you, so we got two guesses, but no clues. Um, so the clues, we, we wanna use what's in the reading itself. So, because remember when you're reading and you don't know a word, you wanna use the rest of the paragraph to figure out what it means. That's, that's the beauty of inferring. So let's say if I have no idea what this means, the, they are impressionists, the, they sense the reader, they render not a landscape. This might, <clears throat> might be a clue. As I see why I underline this, they sense that they render. To render is to keep something, a sense, we all have five senses sight, sound, touch, uh, taste, smell. So that would be a clue to what it's all about. Um, intuition or feeling, influence. I th think these all work pretty well as synonyms. So nice job, Fernanda. And Kimberly, you gave us a good guess as well. So we got two guesses. Uh, and then everybody, let me, uh, let's vote. How did they do? The dictionary definition is effect of an experience. And we've got synonyms of intuition or feeling and influence. What does everybody vote for how they did? Way off or pretty, pretty spot on, pretty good. It's pretty good. Well done. Excellent. So yes. Now let's do another one right here. And we've got to figure out what the word radical means. Now, we went over the word radical and synonyms of radical at the end of last class. And I, I highlighted this section of the reading. But I want to get three more volunteers. One to find the clues. One to make a wild guess and one to give us the dictionary definition. Uh, who's the first volunteer? Me. Uh, was that Marvat? Yes. Marvat. Okay. And another volunteer to give us a guess. Me. Is that um, Helen? Yes. Excellent. And then uh, a volunteer who gets to cheat. Just look it up in the dictionary. My teacher. Is that uh, Nan? Nani. Nani. Okay. Who is Nani? What's, no. uh, what's her? Ani. Ani, Ani, Ani. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ani Sanchez. Okay. All right. Oh, I see a Nan there, N A N. Who is, the, who is Nan? I'm just curious. Sorry, boss. This, this is my first name. But uh, it's Mauricio. <laughs> Mauricio, <laughs> hey, buddy, how you doing? Okay, no, 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 it's good that I know you're here in class because other, otherwise, if I didn't, I didn't recognize the name when you had on your profile, that's why I, I wouldn't know you were here. Good to see you. Okay, so now I know everybody calls you that, Mauricio. 
Fantastic. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. So Marvat, you're going to find the clues in the writing here. And you can even go back to paragraph three if you want. So if I don't know what the word radical means, what's a clue to tell me what it means in this writing? Uh, Helen, you're going to just take a guess. And then Annie, you're going to give us the dictionary definition. Okay, everybody understand? Yes. Yes, okay. yes teacher. All right, I'm going to, I'll give everybody the same time, one minute. Okay, and everybody else, you can do it on your own if you haven't, so one minute. Time is up. Okay, Marvat, what is a clue yes. that you found here? Yeah, the clue is uh, the sentences with their daring color and the quick uh, brush stork, these revolutionary painting. Revolutionary painting is the uh, cinemas of the radical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about I just write this part? Revolutionary. paintings. That's a clue to the definition of radical. These revolutionary paintings. All right, Helen, what's your guess to what the word radical means? Uh, resolve or absolute. Uh, say, say it again, please. Resolve. Resolve. All right. And Annie, what's the dictionary definition? Okay, it said relating to or affecting the fundamental nature of something. Affecting the fundamental the fundamental nature. So when something is radical, it affects the fundamental nature. And let's use this example of the Impressionists. The Impressionists were radical because they were changing not only the style of painting, but the whole reason people painted. The idea of, a, of an artist expressing their own emotions. Like uh, last class, we looked at Picasso's Guernica and um, uh, that was his own, his own, you know, him putting his heart and soul onto the canvas to express what was happening in a war in his lifetime. Uh, painters didn't do that before George, the Impressionist it's, movement. It's yeah. Correct. I, I put innovation. That could be radical. Yeah, that could be radical. But let's um, let's go here. Revolutionary. That is a clue. Resolve, is resolve close to radical? What is resolve? I put re revolutionary and revolutionary innovation. Describe the innovation. Mm -hmm. Now, resolve is to either find, do you mean the verb resolve or the noun resolve to find resolve, Helen? Uh, find resolve. To find resolve, okay. Um, that's not quite what it means. 
uh, that's really like solving a problem or having a, a feeling of resolve means like you've solved problems. When something is radical, it's usually uh, creating the problems. So when someone is radical, they're considered kind of a troublemaker. It's somebody who's changing absolutely everything. Opposite, so let's, opposition, uh, teacher, or opposite? Opposition, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let Helen, let's think of a different word. When someone is really, really different, they're radical. Extreme. Extreme, that works. Can we think of another one? Revolutionary. Yeah, revolutionary, yeah. And that, that's part, I wasn't writing that down because that's already up here. Yes, so revolutionary, extreme, and then affecting the fundamental uh, nature. That means co like completely change it, total change. I'll just say big change. That's what radical means. Like something massive, teacher? Exactly, exactly. Um, if you think of the way people have different political opinions, does everybody know what um, liberal yeah. and conservative mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, tell us what liberal conserv and conservative mean, uh, Jose. Um, I think a conservative is someone is, is um, keep his tradition. Exactly. Beautiful, yeah. Jose. To, to conserve mm -hmm. is to be traditional. Conserv a conservative person is a traditional person. They yeah. like things the way they are. Uh, a liberal person, what does liberal mean? Someone's against into the, the, the tradition. It's, it's kind of progressive. Yeah, they, they want to, they're willing to accept a little bit of change. And if, you, mm -hmm. if I take the root word of liberal and Flexible. remember okay. uh, that last paragraph right here. It sounds a lot like liberated, right? Mm -hmm. Liberated. That means flexible, free. Yeah. So someone who has liberal ideas, they're more flexible, less traditional. But radical, that's more than liberal. A radical person has extreme ideas. They want to be not just a little bit different, but very, very different. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So oftentimes when in some, sometimes when people argue uh, politically, they'll say, they'll, they'll say to a person, uh, if they want to look different, they'll say, I have radical ideas. If they want to be different, if they don't want to look different, they'll say, no, 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 no. I'm not that radical. He's more radical. I'm, you know, that's the way people will argue. So, uh, yeah, that's a way. Um, this is a good. Ex I like this exercise on this page because it helps. Um, in my opinion, doing this exercise uh, helps helps readers not be afraid of new words. So when you see a new word and you're reading, don't say, "Ah, oh, I can't do this. This is too hard." Just look for clues in the writing, and it makes and it makes it more fun, makes it easier. So let's get off of the book and let's have some fun learning about a new artist, uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Here we go. All right. Switching from the document camera back to my camera, putting back my virtual background. There we are. Let's go to, uh, we're talking about art. Okay, there it is. So. There's Lorenzo Medici behind me. He was a funder of a lot of painters in the Renaissance. So let's look at uh, something new and exciting. Last class, we learned about the painting, uh, the painting, the Guernica by Picasso. And it was a very timely painting, but I wanna go into uh, a painter of our own lifetimes, or at least my lifetime, if you have, if you were around in the last century, you may have 
uh, been affected by the work of uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat or uh, Keith Haring. And here is a little bit about Basquiat. All right, uh, quick show of hands. How many people here are from Haiti? All right. Now, Jean-Michel Basquiat was uh, both Haitian and Puerto Rican. So he grew up in a household with uh, three languages, English, Spanish, and uh, Haitian Creole. Now, whoops, long slide, sorry about that. And I'm gonna give you several questions. Sorry, those are previous lessons. There it is. I'm gonna give you several questions about, uh, there it is. So the chaotic brilliance of Jean-Michel Basquiat. He would take ideas of impressionism one or two steps further. And this was in the 1980s. And a lot of his work uh, inspired people into the 90s and the into this century. Chaotic brilliance. Uh, who can give me a word, uh, the definition of this chaotic? C H A O S. Chaos. Chaos uh, is the noun, chaotic mess. is the adjective. Yeah, mess. 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 Yeah, a mess, just a total mess. Yes, exactly. And who knows what is brilliance? To be brilliant. Uh, special, very special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's very special. Like a genius is somebody who can think of something that no one else is thinking about, which, you know, solves problems and changes the world. Chaos in uh, brilliance in chaos. So he would use uh, art. He would make paintings out of oftentimes strips of uh, found objects, different materials, and he would tell really complex stories. And sometimes it would look like it was almost like a child putting it together. But the stories that he would tell with his paintings were exceptionally complex and, and messy as well. Uh, something that may, that told a story, but look like it shouldn't be able to tell a story. So that's uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Now, this is a short TED-Ed video and I've put together a few questions and I'm gonna ask for a few volunteers to uh, answer those questions. So I wanna hear from some people who haven't been able to speak yet. First question, uh, so this will be a listening, a listening task. So when I play the video, first question is, what was Basquiat's inspiration growing up? Who would like to take that question? And I'll pull up the video panel so I can see. Uh, I see one hand up. Uh, Marvat, would you like to take that question? Yes. Marvat will take the first question. All right, so Marvat. And then second question, how did Basquiat make himself known with a moniker Samo? A moniker is like a nickname. So that's Kimberly. All right, for, third question, what did Basquiat Often, uh, often use for canvas. A canvas is what people paint on. Um, big canvases that you see in museums are often quite expensive and he didn't have any money. So he was very creative when he made canvases. I'll who wants to take that question? I'll take it. All right, who is Rosa? Okay. 
All right. Rosa. All right. How was Basquiat's work historical and contemporary? This is what's called um, a paradox. Or otherwise known as an oxymoron. It means a phrase indicating the opposite together. Historical and contemporary. Historical is the past, contemporary is now. So historical and contemporary is a paradox. It's like a sweet and sour, two opposite together. So who wants this question number four? I take the teacher. You're already taking number two. You can't take. No, you're off. right. I, I saw you right, Kimberly. <laughs> it was me. Oh, Francella, I'm sorry. Yes, oh, you're Kimberly, right. You... I, 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 uh, I'm so I, sorry, I Francella. My... I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, Kimberly, <laughs> did you want to take number two? You don't have to. Sorry, teacher. Did you want to take number two? I, I mistook your, you responded. Yes, yes, of course. Okay, okay. Friends, Ellis. All right. Okay, so we got Marvat, Kimberly, Rosa, and Francelis. And is everybody ready to listen? Yep. Yes. Fantastic. Excellent. Here we go. Oh, and Marvat, um, Kimberly, Franz, uh, Stella, Rosa, Francelis Rosa, you've written your questions down, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, teacher. Excellent. Beautiful, beautiful. Here we go. Testing, everybody can hear? Yes. Wonderful. Yes. And here we go. Beautiful. A sky blue canvas ripped open by an enormous skull, teeth bared through visceral slashes of oil and spray paint. In 2017, this untitled artwork was auctioned off for over $110 million. But it's not the work of some old master. These strokes of genius belong to 21 year old black Brooklynite Jean Michel Basquiat one of America's most charismatic painters and currently its highest sold. Born in 1960 to a Haitian father and a Puerto Rican mother, Basquiat spent his childhood making art and mischief in Borum Hill. While he never attended art school. Whoops, I'm sorry, I lost it. I tapped the wrong thing. Sorry about that. A sky blue canvas ripped open by an enormous skull, teeth bared through visceral slashes of oil and spray paint. In 2017, this untitled artwork was auctioned off for over $110 million. But it's not the work of some old master. These strokes of genius belong to 21-year-old black Brooklynite Jean-Michel Basquiat, one of America's most charismatic painters and currently its highest sold. Born in 1960 to a Haitian father and a Puerto Rican mother, Basquiat spent his childhood making art and mischief in Borum Hill. While he never attended art school, he learned by wandering through New York galleries and listening to the music his father played at home. He drew inspiration from unexpected places, scribbling his own versions of cartoons, comic books, and biblical scenes on scrap paper from his father's office. But it was a medical encyclopedia that arguably exerted the most powerful influence on Basquiat. When young Jean-Michel was hit by a car, his mother brought a copy of Grey's Anatomy to his hospital bed. It ignited a lifelong fascination with anatomy that manifested in the skulls, sinew, and guts of his later work, which frequently explores both the power and vulnerability of marginalized bodies. By 17, he launched his first foray into the art world with his friend, Al Diaz. They spray-painted cryptic statements and symbols all over Lower Manhattan, signed with the mysterious moniker, Samo. These humorous, profound, and rebellious declarations were strategically scattered throughout Soho's art scene. 
and after revealing himself as the artist, Basquiat leveraged Samo's success to enter the scene himself, selling postcards, playing clubs with his avant-garde band, and boldly seeking out his heroes. By 21, he turned to painting full-time. His process was a sort of calculated improvisation. Like beat writers, who composed their work by shredding and reassembling scraps of writing, Basquiat used similar cut-up techniques to remix his materials. When he couldn't afford canvases, he fashioned them out of discarded wood he found on the street. He used oil stick, crayons, spray paint, and pencil, and pulled quotes from the menus, comic books, and textbooks he kept open on the studio floor. He kept these sources open on his studio floor, often working on multiple projects at once, pulling in splintered anatomy, reimagined historical scenes, and skulls transplanted from classical still lives, Basquiat repurposed both present-day experiences and art history into an inventive visual language. He worked as if inserting himself into the legacy of artists he borrowed from, producing collages that were just as much in conversation with art history as they were with each other. For instance, Toussaint L'Ouverture versus Savonarola and Undiscovered Genius of the Mississippi Delta offer two distinct visions of Basquiat's historical and contemporary concerns, but they echo each other in the details, such as the reappearing head that also resurfaces in PPCD. All these pieces form a network that offers physical evidence of Basquiat's restless and prolific mind. These chaotic canvases won rapid acclaim and attention, but despite his increasingly mainstream audience, Basquiat insisted on depicting challenging themes of identity and oppression. Marginalized figures take center stage, such as prisoners, cooks, and janitors. His obsession with bodies, history, and representation can be found in works evoking the Atlantic slave trade and African history, as well as pieces focusing on contemporary race relations. In less than a decade, Basquiat made thousands of paintings and drawings, along with sculpture, fragments of poetry, and music. His output accelerated alongside his meteoric rise to fame, but his life and work were cut tragically short when he died from a drug overdose at the age of 27. After his death, Basquiat's work only increased in value, but the energy and flair of his pieces have impacted much more than their financial worth. Today, his influence swirls around us in music, poetry, fashion, and film, and his art retains the power to shock, inspire, and get under our skin. If you want to keep exploring the world of art and artists, check out this playlist. You are me audition. Teacher, you're mute. Uh, 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 that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I did forget to unmute myself. Okay. Oh, okay. So I was asking if uh, <laughs> I was asking if Marvat was there. It was my. I wasn't here. <laughs> I was talking to myself there for a minute. Okay. So first question: What was Basquiat's inspiration growing up? Uh, Marvat, that was your question. Yes. Uh, basket and inspiration growing up um, uh, because uh, he uh, thinking about the life and how express of the life by uh, uh, which he is like the oil and the spray paint and the cartons and uh, the books uh, which is uh, um, deal with it uh, when uh, he was a child yeah yeah nice uh, second question for, I believe that was Kimberly. How did Basquiat make himself known with the moniker Samo? Okay, um, he makes himself known by this name, like 
I mean, by this name, by painting graffitis? graffiti. Yeah, graffiti. Yeah. Graffiti. Yeah, graffiti with his friends for all over Manhattan and promoting himself in clubs and posters to get more recognized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Third question, what did Basquiat often use for canvas? That was um, Rosa, right? Oops, I was like you, mute, talking to myself. Um, yeah, I was saying that he used car boxes that he find on the streets in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, he would write. He would write on cardboard. So, a lot of the, his really famous paintings that hang in fancy museums and auction houses that people pay millions of dollars for were, were just trash lying around the street at one point. So he was recycling. Exactly. Yeah. This. This is exa exactly. Absolutely right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Last question. How was Basquiat's work on his both historical and contemporary? Um, I think because he remained the histor historical essence in the painting, but with new technique. Nice. Nice. I like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send uh, some resources for uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat's paintings to the WhatsApp group. I'm going to give everybody to uh, describe a few that they see. I'm actually going to, well, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll put, instead of uh, assigning individual paintings, I'll just let everybody talk freely. I'm going to give everyone a resource to look at uh, a lot of these different works. Here we are. So I'm going to give you, this is a good one, artsy.net. Uh, I'm going to, instead of Google Arts and Culture, take a look at your phone and I'm going to send you uh, several of these. And all I want you to do is look at them and describe and break, just talk freely in your breakout rooms about what you see. Because a lot of them, remember, they're, they're messy. A lot of them almost deliberately look like it was done by a child. But you can see the prices that people pay for them when they're auctioned off. OK, everybody, let me know when you see, uh, when you see it on your phone. Yes. Yes. Please. Okay, great. So I'm going to put you into breakout rooms and just speak freely. Uh, find one you like. If you don't like it, you say, what is this? I'm so confused. I think this looks like a big mess. How could anybody pay millions of dollars for it? Just speak freely. Talk with each other. Share your thoughts. I'll create uh, four breakout rooms. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, four breakout rooms coming up. Actually, no, three. I think, yes, 15 people divides by three is five. Excellent. Here we go, everybody. Go ahead and join your breakout rooms.
Rossi, it's breakout room time. You can go ahead and join it.